Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be doing a review on Sayuki Volume 2, The Resurrected Edition. This is the cover. Now, if uh, you watched last week's episode, we reviewed Volume 1. So, Resurrected Edition is basically your 3-in-1 uh, or what we would call an omnibus. Now, let's get a brief overview of this one real quick. Alright, so this is the cover. Letters here are glossy. This is glossy. And it has a trim that's like a almost teal or weird green color. Also has it around the letters and around this stuff. This one has uh, this character on the cover. And then it has the rest of the team here. The other three characters. Now the first volume had this guy on the cover. And then him along with these guys on the back cover. So either way, it's a two-page spread, basically. And you get a picture of the whole team, all our, all our main players right here. So yeah, I, I really like the design of these books. They are hardcover, nice binding. Here's the binding. You know, you get this nice hole. You want this so that the pages can lay flat. The less of this, we call this the gutter loss. The less of this you get, the better. So here you get a little bit of it. You see, you see right there, typically you would want none, nothing here, and no space there whatsoever, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I like here that in the beginning of the page, look, it shows you the table of content and all the chapters included. So I said chapter 12, 13, 14, etc., all the way up to chapter 23. So we're getting 12 to 23 here. The first volume obviously had 11 chapters. This one has 12 chapters. The last chapter starts at page 357, so it goes about 380 pages or so. On this volume, the pacing, the tone, the feel completely changed. Volume 1, I thought, eh, it's okay, it was okay. It was never like sucked, but it kind of dragged a little bit. And it almost felt like a slice of life where they're just going from town to town, eating, uh, meeting people and whatnot, right? Occasionally fighting a villain, but not that often. Now, this one was super action heavy. It went 100 miles and running, right? Like... Even the art got a lot better because because there was a lot more action scenes. So you saw the art improving and the way the action scenes moved look more dynamic. And the story, we also got more story. We got more uh, development with the characters, more background as far as what were they doing before they decided to head west, right? Before they went on this whole journey. And even uh, some interesting stuff I didn't really pay attention to in the first volume because it's kind of like old school Japan. And I was like, I always knew like, uh, the, our main character, he carries a revolver. That felt out of place to me, always. Then I didn't even uh, pay attention that in the first volume, they're riding around in a Jeep to go west. I was like, what the hell? Like, cars didn't exist back then. So it's crazy how we have modern technology, but the story is set kind of like in the past, right? And we got introduced to a new gang of yokais, which kind of sometimes work with our main characters and sometimes against them. Here we get a little background on one of our characters. You see... um. Used to have this girlfriend, she says, don't you wish we could just get married? I like this panel here, it just shows them holding hands. Very powerful panel right there. So, you know, it's, it's his past. And then he has this nightmare. Here she is dead, but she's like back from the dead, right? She's like possessed or something. And, and now she's out to get him. So, you know, we start getting um, stories where the villains that show up now have some type of past or connection with our heroes, they're not just random uh, villains that show up and they got to fight, right? Like, there's like more story to it now. So yeah, this book definitely got a lot better. Then our main villainess and her group, they're kind of sometimes helping our characters and sometimes against them as well. So you never know when they're going to team up or fight. It's like there's a lot of shades of gray, like nobody's truly the villains in a way, right? Because at any given time, they team up with our heroes. So that was a nice twist that also somewhat complicated the stories and, and who these characters are right so they're not so uh like uh i don't want to say cookie cutter but i will say more so they're not like more one note so they're, they're a lot more complex now we're getting background stories on them like why some of them are villains why some of them are doing what they do why sometimes they team up with the good guys so they have this moral code where sometimes they agree with each other and sometimes they don't right as uh, most human beings, you know, we always have, nobody's 100% good or 100% bad. It's just always difference in ideology, right? Now, check this out. This, I really enjoyed what they did here with the art right here. Turns out this character, a long time ago, she got pregnant by a yokai. And she's a regular human. 
So she was asked to kill her unborn child because it's going to be born yokai, right? And they're possessed and they're evil and la di da la di da So we thought a long time ago uh, she took care of that. Turns out she still had the kid and it has now appeared as an adult, right? And it's raining hell, right? Uh, it's not a good person. So maybe she should have done what they told her to, right? Uh, it, it gets crazy. It gets crazy. It's a good story right here. And I, this character, that the artwork here, reminds me a lot of uh, Ghost in the Shell. The way uh, the character is kind of like uh, in this weird thing, right? Like Almost like if it's barely being born, but as in an adult body. Here are some of our color pages at the end with our four heroes. And always the last color page that uses a different color uh, style, which is always the page I enjoy the most. I like this color a lot more. This is kind of like our main villain in this uh, volume. Look, it looks wicked right there. I, I really enjoy this, this page right here. I also enjoy the last page on the first volume. This painting style just, just works for me. It works with this art style. It gives it like a almost eerie feel to it, right? All in all, I would give this volume somewhere around an 8. As for the first volume, it was closer to like a 6 in my book. So it definitely went up a notch. Uh, if you like a lot of action in your stories, like some old school feudal Japan feel to it, although it has a little bit more of a modern uh, feel in a way, right? But if you like that kind of stuff, you might get something out of this. And it's also, the first one felt like it was about like zombies almost. This one feels a lot different. This is more what I expected based on the cover, right? So really enjoyed this volume. I can't wait to uh, finish reading volume three and four. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have read this before, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about it. And um, if you read any of the other spin-off series, also let me know which one was your favorite, right? So, cause I'm planning to read the spin-offs after I finish this as well. Okay guys, other than that, I'd just like to thank you guys for taking some time out of your day to check out the video. And I'll check you guys out next time.